Peter, what kind of non-chemotherapy option you mentioned is fish and our chemo refractory I've seen that setting. What kind of combination you're looking at or you think is exciting to look at? I think um, there is a, obviously a need for new therapies in people with refractory lymphomas or, uh, or relapsed lymphomas. Um, not everybody is a candidate for CAR T cells. People who receive CAR T cells, the majority of them will still unfortunately experience a persistent lymphoma or recurrent lymphoma. Um, there are a number of agents that are under evaluation, right? As Cami mentioned, the uh, uh, bendamustine rituximab, um, polituzumab uh, regimen, I think, is a reasonable option. I think we're going to talk more later about the uh, more 208 lenalidomide regimen. Historically, I can say that um, we have used lenalidomide rituximab, and um, although it does not routinely result in uh, responses, occasionally it surprises you, and some patients can do very well, so we have used uh, that frequently. Uh, this year at ASH, we will see continuation of uh, the Pharmacyclics 1123 trial, which was the combination of ibrutinib lenalidomide rituximab. Uh, I think uh, that regimen clearly has activity. We saw it, we just talked about it in the frontline setting, and, and uh, now I think there's overwhelming data that that is a, an active uh, regimen, so we have occasionally used that uh, off-label. Uh, there are times when we will just use single agent chemotherapy, uh, gemcitabine uh, in a palliative setting or bendamustine in a palliative setting when the goal is simply to help some, uh, somebody to feel better. Uh, anecdotally, I think that we've also tried uh, a variety of things, including HDAC inhibitors, uh, demethylating agents, all of, you know, periodically, uh, people get responses to some of these things. And although it's hard to say that that's the right thing to do all of the time, mm -hmm. Uh, we will always have examples of somebody that does well. And so some of these patients with large cell lymphoma seem to have a lymphoma that does not explode, but rather trickles. And those are opportunities to uh, try creative things. My bias is always to do that in the context of a clinical trial. It's not always feasible. And uh, in general, we've been pretty good at coming up with things to try for patients. You could argue that osquebutinib is a form of immunotherapy. Yeah, right? when you were saying, when you were talking yeah. about immunotherapy, that was the one thing that kind of right. uh, sprang to mind, right? So um, we have experience, we have done something in that there's some um, Chicago, I mean, a Northwestern group had um, looked at um, using Pembro post-auto, trying to take advantage of the better immunological milieu post-auto, checkpoint inhibitors as single agent. The data was um, intriguing. So we built upon this, and then did, we did EP Nivo post auto and post auto. And uh, the EP Nivo post auto, it's a small number of patients. It's 15 primary factory patients or early relapse. And um, these patients with EFS had 18 months is 83 percent. So this is there's no question that there's toxicity, but that's um, that's not an easy situation. And I think that this ways, uh, I think allotransplant, I agree, although sometimes CAR T serves now as a bridge towards an allo. That's a separate story. But the allotransplant, there's opportunities to revisit it, not think of auto as a just a hard dose therapy, but as a way to reset the immune system and try to take advantage of better immunotherapy because these patients have enormous amount of Tregs and immunosuppressive environment. So I think that's an opportunity. I would just say that, in general, it's better to do that in the context of a clinical trial than outside of a clinical it trial. It is a trial. Because oftentimes we're surprised, right? In follicular lymphoma, we combined lenalidomide with PI3 kinase inhibitors. Thought it was going to be great, wasn't so great. You know, in multiple myeloma, there was the whole checkpoint inhibitor lenalidomide story that might, that might turn out to be reasonable mm -hmm. in other lymphomas or other, other diseases yep. in myeloma. Didn't seem so great. So I think... Um, we're all pretty clever, but we should be careful not to be too clever. No, absolutely. I mean, we talk about, uh, we are giving to our audience the, um, what's coming up and what's new, and then uh, because the field is really exciting, there's still an unmet need. I mean, patients with relapsed large cell lymphoma in a situation, refractory large cell lymphoma, have still a very poor outcome, right? So there's a lot, yeah? Yeah, yeah especially like the post CAR T relapse. You know, you mentioned the, the overall response rate or the CR rates in. It's initially good for CAR T cell therapy, but then patients start relapsing, you know, you can say three months point or six month point, and 
uh, the problem with the relapses post CAR T is about 60% of the patients, and uh, they usually have other issues like uh, prolonged cytopenias, and they're not eligible for trials. So it's hard to put them put a CAR T post CAR T patient relapse into a trial sometimes, mm -hmm. and we just have to kind of figure out. Yeah, I think I think I think you nail it because this is a very difficult population to deal with. But we are living in post cal teaser world. They are there and they are there to stay probably for for some future, and we need to learn how to deal with those patients who are lapsing post cal teasers. As we are developing our future clinical trials, we have to be open minded and redefine what are the inclusion criteria. Really open minded, but accounts. Exactly. Well, you know, with some of the targeted agents, absolutely. maybe the, the platelet yeah. count absolutely. or the no, absolutely. neutropenia is not as 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 as, as important. Uh, so it'll be important to kind of those. advocate for a absolutely. specific inclusion criteria. And some trials they require a hemoglobin of ten. I mean, this is impossible. It, there's no question that the clinical trial have become too complex over time, and then um, and not open enough, and then make it. Difficult to enroll and difficult to duplicate in the real world afterwards. The, the, good thing, clinical trial, yeah. the good thing about it is I think we have a better understanding also on the side of photogratory agents is that some of those regulations are actually affecting development in those areas. And I think people appreciate now this more and I think we'll see a little bit of change in the regulatory um, landscape co coming soon.